Welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Today we have a golf ball review. Now, for those of you that have subscribed or watched the channel for a while, you'll know that we do a lot of hardware, we do a lot of software. We don't do a lot of equipment reviews like golf balls. Um, we're getting more into it and we have people reaching out to us just like we have this week. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Jack is working on manufacturing a golf ball alternative for the Unicore QED. Now, if you don't know the system, I'll give you a quick brief overview. It's a high-speed camera system that uses infrared as well. It sits three and a half feet behind the ball, up on your ceiling, okay, roughly about 10 feet above, and it uses a dot pattern to measure spin. And if you look in the lower right right there, you'll actually see, you can see some colored dots. That's from a shot I took, and it's reading the dot pattern, and that's how it measures backspin, side spin, etc. All right, so... The thing that's been noticed out there is that there is a premium Bridgestone ball from Unicor. Um, I've been quite pleased with it. I, I do understand some people mentioned early on, they said you won't get as high a spin as you can out of that ball. Has it really affected me much in the simulator environment and in golf, you know, in, indoor golf play? Not really. Um, but I understand what they're saying and having an alternative to go to is nice. And so Jack's given us this ball to test, which he said will give you a higher spin um, it give you a little lower launch angle because some people have been seeing a little higher launch angle from the Bridgestone. And it's a three-piece ball with a urethane cover. And the dot placement, which I'll show you right now, is actually done during the manufacturing process for longer wear on the dots. So here is Jack's ball over here. And then here's the premium Bridgestone ball. The one thing that I've noticed is the dimple pattern is a little different. All right. The other thing I've noticed is, is this ball seems to be a little more pure white. And this one seems to be just a tad off-white. Those are the only differences I can really see just from the naked eye. What we want to do for you today is, is we want to compare them side by side. I figured using E6 would be nice because I can use that target out there, which will give me a, a green approach. And you guys can kind of see some spin on the green. Um, I'm going to use a 58 degree wedge to start off. And I figured we'd hit a couple drivers at the end, just so you guys know that you're not going to have any, you know, distance, you know, uh, effect or anything like that going on uh, for using this ball. So let's go ahead. Let's hit the Bridgestone uh, premium first. Let me grab my 58 degree wedge. Why don't we shrink my camera down a little bit now that we've shown the ball off. No reason to have that that big. We'll shrink it down for you guys. I'm going to leave the uh, Unicore QED Ignite software a little bit larger down there. It shouldn't be in the way. Um, 58 degree wedge for me. Uh, if I hit it well, I usually can get uh, close to 100 yards. All right. Um, the spin I've been seeing uh, from most systems if I really hit the ball well, it can be upwards of 10 plus thousand, okay? I have noticed less with this Bridgestone ball. Have I been able to get it close to about 9,000? Yes, uh, more on a good shot though. So that was a pretty darn good strike. That should be a good example of the Bridgestone. A Little bit of spin back on the green. And what's it telling us? 63.32. Launch angle of 39. Okay. Let's hit another one. Another decent strike. Got my distance out of that. Once again, a little spin back on the green. 63.95. Launch angle of 36. All right. So let's go ahead and switch to Jack's three piece manufactured ball. And while we switch to that, I'll give you a little information about the ball. So the ball is actually uh, currently ordered for stock. Um, roughly about three weeks out is what he's estimating right now. And the price should be $4 a ball. So I would kind of compare that to the price of just a normal premium golf ball. Um, so it seems realistic to me. Um, I know that the people that are looking for this extra spin will probably find that that's a, a fair price. So um, I'm going to provide his information uh, on the screen and in the comments below. Um, so you guys can reach out to Jack and, uh, you know, purchase these balls as they come in stock. Um, I think it's pretty cool that he reached out and let us, you know, demonstrate and test the ball for everyone. And, uh, you know, obviously I think everybody's going to appreciate the efforts that he's putting in to give an alternative uh, for Unicore QED users. A little bit on the toe on that one. A little bit on the toe. 
Whoa, a little more zip on the, the green there. Now here's an interesting part and I wanted to play E6 for a reason. So these guys have been working really hard, 11,152 and a 32 degree launch angle. Wow, much lower launch angle and a whole lot more spin. Wow, and you know, you guys may know that I'm, I'm currently testing the Unicore IXO, which I actually have a video coming up on that. And I've been using a Pro V1, and with my 58 degree wedge uh, with the IXO, I've been getting 10,000, 10,500 on good shots, um, just so you guys can kind of get a uh, you know comparison there. Um, the thing that you're gonna have to understand is, is that with spin becomes um, you know a soft ball, Jack actually showed an example. Um, I mean, if you're gonna crank wedges on this thing all day, it's a soft cover. So you might get a little bit of wear. I actually have just a, a tiny bit of wear um, spot here if you just want to kind of see that. Um, it's very minimal for, you know, hitting it with a wedge a handful of times already. I think the most important part that everybody's worried about is how long do the dots last? So I'm going to kind of like put a dot where my uh, club head would hit because this is a test ball. I mean, we're not going to try to make it last forever. I want to show you guys the performance. Swung at that one, closed the face down, got some distance out of it, <laughs> lots of zip. So I, I didn't mean to get distracted there. The reason that I wanted to use E6, these guys have been listening for feedback and working hard. The spin back algorithm, 11,131, launch angle of 29. I mean, just a much different ball characteristic, much different. Um, the difference uh, in E6 is, that when you have a high spin above 10,000 is what we've kind of seen so far, the backspin on the green tends to be a little over exaggerated and they know that. They've listened to the feedback, they're working on it. I think there's an update coming out pretty soon um, because I was even on uh, the phone with some other developers from another piece of hardware today and they're pushing out some updates in the next D6 update. They're kind of waiting for that to all come together. So um, I figured it'd be a good example because you'd see the difference when you have that high spin, what really happens on, on an E6 green right now. So um, hopefully they'll get that update pushed out soon and get that adjusted. It's cool seeing the ball action though. So let's hit one more. I'm cranking on these things pretty hard. I'm doing it on purpose. All right, that was a good shot. Of course, there's some massive spin back, but that's okay. Like I said, E6 is well aware and they're gonna adjust that. And depending on what you're playing, so I think these are at a 10 right now, uh, 11,341, launch angle of 30. So definitely launching lower, spinning higher. So we're cranking on this ball really hard. The most interesting part that I'm seeing so far is that the dots are not wearing. I'm seeing a little bit of uh, casing wear. A little there, a little there, really not bad. But the dots, are just uh, not really wearing. I mean, if I look right where one was impacted directly, that's probably where I aimed it. That dot is really still fully in place. Let me make sure that's focusing for you guys. Um, so I think Jack is onto something here. I think he has himself a pretty well manufactured ball that can get these guys more spin that they were looking for. Um, so let's do this. Let me go ahead and switch over to driver really quick. And that way we can test driver to make sure it's getting the distance you guys want. Go ahead, get my cursor over here. Let's switch to driver. And why don't we switch to a flat uh, exit round, new course, flat range. There we go. All right, guys, so welcome back. I hit a few drives, so I took a short break to warm up because I didn't swing a driver yet today. I uh, figured that would be a smart idea. Uh, you can see I, I just hit one. Uh, carry 238, total 252, not the best drive for me. Um, spins a little higher than I usually am. I'm usually in the higher 2000s, uh, way inside out, ball speed 151. So I'm gonna hopefully correct that a little bit um, and hit some drives for you guys so you can get some examples here, all right? Um, driver's been my weak point. Anybody who's been following the channel, I, I really lost my driver and I've been working on getting it corrected. So hopefully you can uh, bear with me here and understand that this is work in progress. <sighs> a 
wasn't a bad shot for me. Looks like it was still a little high spin though. 248, 262, ball speed 152. So that, that gives you a good idea. Um, and like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm spinning them a little, a little high, honestly, with the way I'm hitting them. I'd be very interested to get, uh, you know, somebody with a much stronger driver down here to see how much lower their spin number was. Cause that's the only thing I'm, I think people that might stand out to some people because a really good driver, I think is in the mid two thousands. Um, you know, uh, it just depends, you know, obviously nice launch, low spin gets you a really far drive. And, uh, with, with my swing path and impact and everything right now, um, I'm just not achieving that. So I want everybody to make sure they, you know, pay attention to all the data. Uh, you know, that way, like I said, Jack, it's a, a fair shot here at his ball, um, performance, you know, which we obviously saw the, the high spin on the wedge, which is nice. Everybody was looking for. That one's going to be a little left. There's my, there you go. 2730. Carry 258. And that's, you know, that may have been a little left, um, but that's a pretty good drive for me. You know, I mean, I, like I said, it's a lot of work in progress. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick demonstration. Uh, the capabilities, obviously you can see, um, you know, even though I hit a couple high spinners there because of my drive and my impact and everything, you can, uh, obviously get a decent drive out of it, <clears throat> keep that face a little better than mine <laughs> and your path a little better and you'll probably be just fine. So um, this has been the review of the prototype, if you will, three-piece urethane uh, golf ball from Jack. Uh, his information is going to be down in the description. Um, I'll put it in the uh, comments as well. I uh, appreciate you guys watching as always. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more stuff coming. I'm working on a new IXO video right now for you guys. Um, we have a lot of, lot of good stuff coming up. So uh, additional hardware that I'll be adding to the studio. I think everybody's going to be really excited to see. So um, stay tuned for that. I'll kind of you know tease everybody as we go. But some people might know what I'm talking about. But we've got some new hardware coming to the studio, which is exciting. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll be more than happy to demonstrate some other things. But I think this was the key. I think everybody was looking at that within 100 yards. Um, you know, I, they needed a golf ball that had higher spin within 100 yards, still had the capability of getting you a good drive, which, I mean, I'll be honest, carry 260 for me is a good drive. I mean, I pulled that a little bit. Um, could have been close to in play though, right? <laughs> for me, that that's good. So hope that gives you guys a clear understanding. I appreciate you guys watching as always. Uh, comment below and let me know what you think, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.